I cannot believe it. 500 subscribers. Thank you so much. I never expected to hit this milestone. And if I did, I thought it was gonna take many, many years until I really honed in on my video editing and filming skills. So appreciative of all of you and thank you so much for being here. I still can't believe it. So I wasn't planning on making this video. I do have a content calendar that I try to follow. As soon as I hit 500 subscribers, I decided to do something a little bit different and share a video about my experiences because I find myself watching a lot of these types of videos. And the reason being is I'm trying to connect with other small YouTubers that are beginners just so that I could lift myself up a little bit, feel motivated, feel like that this achievement was possible and thought maybe that I could do the same for some other small YouTubers. YouTubers and encourage them to start filming and uploading their first video. The amount of growth and internal glow up I've had is insane in the past few months. I'm the same old me on the outside, although I have been forced to do my hair and makeup way more for filming than I did before. But internally, I do feel like a completely different person. I split this video into four different parts and my hope is by the end of this video, I've inspired at least one person to embrace that publish button with some confidence and conviction. It's time to trust in your voice and share your unique perspective that you have with the world. So first of all, I'll start with my own journey. Then I'll move to talking a little bit about imposter syndrome and why some people choose not to post on YouTube. And then I'm gonna finish off with YouTube tips that I did follow and what I didn't follow. If this is the first time we're meeting, welcome. My name is Angeline and my channel is all about wellness, fitness, and self-care and how I fit it all into my schedule as a mom of two toddlers. All right, so I've never really posted on social media before. Now, the reason I wanna talk about my journey is because I find that my journey is a little bit different than everyone else's. I definitely grew up in the Facebook era where Facebook was really popular in high school, definitely posted on there. I don't have TikTok because it's not something that really interests me, but I do have an Instagram account. However, I don't create any original content for Instagram. I am what you call a reposter. For those of you that have seen some my videos before you know that I am a commercial model so I do get tagged in reels and posts here and there and I honestly just repost those onto my Instagram feed to share with my friends and family and call it a day. I never really had the urge to create my own content because I have major imposter syndrome. I'll talk about this a little bit later but I definitely feel like a lot of you can relate to this. Now I'd say if you look at my phone usage you would see that I do spend time on Instagram scrolling but I found myself getting bored of influencers living these loud lifestyles and you know after an hour of scrolling I don't walk away from that feeling great. One, I'm just annoyed that I've wasted an hour of my time scrolling and two, I've got nothing to show for it. So I began craving content that was more relatable and realistic. If I were to spend that hour watching a YouTube video instead, I learned something. I felt like I've been able to connect with the creator and the creator's community. I definitely feel there's going to be more of a shift from people watching short form content to watching more long form. In one of my other videos that I'll take here, I talk about how we want to be creating more of a positive energy and space for ourselves and recognizing how we feel when a post comes up on Instagram. If we come across a post from an influencer that makes us feel angry, jealous, bored, annoyed, it's time to unfollow that influencer, whether you know them or not. That's not the energy that we wanna be bringing into our day. I found myself unfollowing more and more influencers and that's when I had to take a step back and recognize the need to connect with more real people and creators. So this is not a lie, I'm not exaggerating. One day I woke up, I just decided I'm gonna start a YouTube channel and no one was more surprised than me, but my husband was also very surprised because I've never been one, like I said, to post, nor do I have any experience in video filming or editing. That day was, January 1st, 2024. So I've been kind of on a strange journey since I've had my kids and I'm sure if you are a parent you can relate to this. Since having kids I still have similar hobbies that I had before. Um, I have the same nine to five that I had before but the difference is every waking hour of my day pretty much goes to my children. I always felt like something was missing. Postpartum I immediately jumped back into teaching spin but then I found after about a year that wasn't filling my cup anymore. Then I kind of dabbled in other hobbies to try to be creative such as card making, scrapbooking, painting, all things that I really enjoy but I just felt like there was something missing, like an itch I couldn't scratch. So maybe it was the, because it was the first couple days of January 
February that I was feeling inspired to start something new and fresh or I had new goals. For some reason, I posted a video of me in different gym outfits and that was kind of the first time that I had planned something and filmed something just to post on social media. But what I found was that I loved every second of that creative process. The planning, the filming, the editing, writing the caption, it was really filling my cup. So that brought me to January 13th, 2024, when I posted my very first long form video. And I read somewhere that creative expression can serve as a means for connecting with other people, self-discovery, emotional release, all of which are essential for maintaining well-being and mental health. So after posting that first video, I was hooked. I mean, it probably took me way too long. I filmed it way too many times. But the process and being creative, I felt like I had found something that was really what I needed to improve my mental health and well-being. Sure, it only got four views, but that didn't matter because it was something that I was doing for me. Now, I want to say that I am a level lower than a beginner when it comes to script writing, filming, editing, lighting, anything like that. And I actually started filming on the back crack camera of my Samsung phone because the front is all cracked. So I couldn't actually see myself filming and that's why if you've seen some of my other videos, thank you very much, there's no consistency in the lighting and you know the blurred background, everything like that. It's all a mess. I actually had to use a mirror to see what I look like. It was not an easy thing. I just use a regular microphone that's on the camera. I have a crappy plastic ring light from Amazon and one of the legs is actually broken so it kind of sits sideways. So that's just my crappy beginner setup. Let's not even talk about editing. Now I don't have a computer, but in 2016, I purchased a small little laptop because I was starting to teach spin and I wanted just a really lightweight, basic laptop to carry around with me from class to class. Now cut to 2024 when I've decided to start editing 4K videos. All of the software editing programs I was trying to download onto my computer, I couldn't because the graphics card couldn't actually support it. And even now when I'm editing my videos, I did find some software that I could download my laptop overheats, it's slow, it's terrible. This is all I have and this is what I'm gonna use. Level below a beginner when it comes to this. Now I do wanna point out, and maybe it is Elfin in the room, I have been a model for many, many years since I was a teenager. I am comfortable speaking in front of a camera and being in front of a camera. So the lack of confidence isn't an issue for me. But let's talk about what is an issue for me and probably for most of you, and that's imposter syndrome. Why this is the majority of you haven't posted your first video yet or have filmed many iterations of it. Maybe you're like me and you filmed your first video and then watched it back and it is super, super cringy. Posting your first YouTube video is like putting yourself on stage in front of an audience with, with the lights flashing in your eyes, blinding you. We feel super vulnerable putting ourselves out there for everyone to see. I mean, I think it's natural to feel imposter syndrome, that nagging voice in our head, questioning whether you're worthy enough, whether your content is worthy enough, whether what you're saying matters to somebody. But here's the thing. Every creator has been where you are. Every creator has been where I am. It's part of the journey. It's part of the process. It's part of growth. So as you prepare to hit that publish button, don't forget you belong here. There is space for you here. Your voice matters. Ah, see, my battery just died because I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. So embrace the uncertainty, lean into the discomfort, and don't forget, want to hear your story, your perspective, your unique voice. So don't let imposter syndrome rob you of the opportunity to share. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the YouTuber tips that I followed and which ones I didn't. If you're a small YouTuber, if you watch one single video about tips for growth on YouTube or how to get subscribers on YouTube or more watch time, as soon as you watch one of those videos, a hundred are going to come up. There's just so much advice out there. I think what's important is what works for one creator isn't going to work for you. What works for me is it gonna work for you? You kind of have to find your own flow, your own vibe. And remember that you still want to be authentic, be true to yourself. Do what makes sense for you in regards to posting. Otherwise it's not gonna be sustainable and you're not gonna be enjoying it in the long term. With tip number one, identifying my target audience. I did think this was important because I needed to figure out who I'm speaking to, how I was going to speak to them and what type of content I was gonna post. So for me, I'm in my late thirties. I wanted to have more of a big system 
sister by maybe talking to new moms about how they can fit self-care into their schedule while being the best mom that they can be. So this is kind of the demographic that I was targeting. Whether I've done that, I'm not sure, but every time I'm speaking to my camera, this is who I picture myself talking to. Number two, content planning. Naturally, my personality is I'm a huge, huge planner. I love to plan things out. Maybe this doesn't excite a lot of people, but I do think it's important because this way I find myself not struggling to come up with ideas. Every time I have an idea, I'll write it down on a list and I have a monthly calendar where I will plan out which videos I do want to post. So this brings me to consistency. I found that posting one long form video every Friday is what worked for me. And again, I'm not saying I'm a successful YouTuber. I have 500 subscribers, which is great for me. Something I never thought I'd accomplish. Posting every Friday seems to help my community's engagement. And I do post some short form videos, but it's not something that I do consistently. It's just something I do for fun. When I feel like doing a morning routine or get ready with me video, I find that I'll just film it and post it just for fun. I don't really have a consistent schedule when it comes to short form content. And I post once a week because I just read that the algorithm likes consistency and posting more than once a week isn't something that fits with my schedule. So once a week is something that is sustainable for me, it's exciting for me, and something I'm gonna try to maintain. Number three, focusing on thumbnails and titles. It's not something that I've done before and it's super fun. I really enjoy doing that piece. And I think it, it is important because for me, I find myself really drawn to people's thumbnails. I don't click on videos where I feel like the thumbnail is boring or it doesn't excite me. So I myself try to create exciting thumbnails that might help people click my video. All right, now for tips that I didn't follow. So I think, you know, the internet might be split on this, but I didn't niche down. I mean, obviously I have the target audience that I'm trying to reach. If you watch my videos, you can see I don't have one specific niche that I'm going towards. It's more of a lifestyle channel, fitness, wellness, self-care. If I was gonna really lean into which videos are performing well on my channel and only post that kind of content, then I would be posting bikini review videos until the end of time. But I don't want to be putting myself in a box. My workout wear review videos also do well, but I don't want to be just a workout review channel. If I had been posting that those types of videos once a week since January, I likely would have a much higher watch time subscriber count. But again, I didn't want to put myself in that box. I still posted my hair review videos, my Crest White Strips review videos. I don't care that they don't get a lot of clicks. I don't care that they don't get a lot of views. It's something that I like doing and I'm going to continue doing it. And this brings me to vlogs. A lot of YouTube tips, they say when you first start out as a YouTuber, do not not post any vlogs because people don't give a shit what you're doing. And this is 100% true. Like you don't know me. So what do you care what I'm doing on a Saturday or a Sunday or why I wake up at 5 a.m. and go work out? You don't care about that. I love, love planning vlogs, shooting vlogs, editing vlogs, which is so funny because vlogs are so much more work than just a talking head video. And vlogs get very little views on my channel, but I don't care. I'm going to continue doing it because I love it and I'm doing it for me. And that's what excites me. And I already touched on this one a little bit, but I did not invest in good equipment. They say you need to have a decent camera and more than that you need to have good audio and a good edi editing program or maybe you need to outsource your editing and get you know, a company to come in and do it for you. Obviously quality content is going to keep people engaged. I'm trying to do it myself and I'm trying to do it without investing a lot in equipment. I'm not making money on YouTube. I'm doing this as a hobby so maybe if I was making a little bit of money I would invest in some good equipment but right now I'm going to work with what I have but I do apologize if my audio is shitty or my video quality isn't great. I'm doing my best with what I have. And the last tip I didn't follow, they say to make sure you're promoting your YouTube channel on your other social media accounts, linking it. I'm not active on any other social media channels, so I haven't been promoting my YouTube channel. And again, this is something specific to me. You might feel differently. Maybe promoting it on your TikTok, Instagram has got you more views, more subscribers. But for me, I'm not going to be creating new social media accounts like TikTok or being more active on Instagram just to promote YouTube. I just want to say thank you again. Your comments, your feedback, your encouragement is what's kept me going. Whether, you know, you heart my video or like my video or write a comment or subscribe. Because I have so few subscribers, I think getting those notifications on my phone is just very exciting for me. And I think each interaction I've had has definitely shaped the type of content that I make. And it's not just about my journey. Thanks to all the incredible creators that have 
inspired my journey and uplifted me along the way. I didn't want to make just another milestone video. I wanted it to be more of a conversation about shared experiences and aspirations for everybody. So please comment down below where you're at in your journey. Comment down below if anything I've said has resonated with you. I'm very excited for what the future holds and working towards that next milestone. I feel like this is just the beginning of what's to come. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in the type of content that I create. Here's to reaching new heights together. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Bye for now. Oh,